These days, the world is all about energy efficiency and trying to reduce consumption, but that wasn't always the case. Once upon a time, all anyone cared about was bigger, louder, and faster when it came to engines. And there's still a few people out there who just want to build awesome and huge engines for their vehicles. From this 1930s monster to the beast that runs on diesel, here's the 20 biggest engines in the world. <sighs> Number 20. 1936 Fairbanks Morse Model Fairbanks Morse joined the big engine industry in 1912 after Rudolph's diesel American license expired. The company's massive Model Y semi-diesel stationary engine, which was introduced in 1914, quickly rose to prominence as a reliable workhorse for mines, sugar, rice, and lumber mills, among other uses. The YVA diesel engine was upgraded and given the new designation Model 32 engine in 1924. The Model 32 was the result of years of modifications made to the original Model Y design. Various cylinder head designs, higher compression, and eventually the use of high pressure injection and differential fuel injectors were among the advancements. This is the most powerful engine in the world. The Model 32 engines were in use for many years at irrigation and drainage pumping stations, cotton gins, manufacturing facilities, ice plants, flour mills, rock crushing facilities, textile mills, power plants, and many other sites. To give an idea of its durability, the needle rollers on the piston pin needed to be changed after 10,000 hours of operation to offer an estimate of the engine's service life. The piston pin should be turned 180 degrees, and the needle rollers should be changed once more at 20,000 hours. The piston pin and brushing should be changed after 40,000 hours, or 4.57 years of non-stop use. Model 32 production continued until at least the 1940s. At least one engine continued to run until 1991, while many engines continued to be used regularly at various places into the 70s. Three Model 32 engines are still in use at the Indian Grave Drainage District in Quincy, Illinois, and three more are available as backup generators in Delta, Colorado. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. 24V71 Detroit Big Mike. Nobody takes the adage, go big or go home, as seriously as car aficionado Mike Hara. This automotive visionary developer and philanthropist is well known for his wildly prosperous California development company, Caribou Industries, and his enormous charitable contributions around Orange County, helping kids and the community. But he also goes big when it comes to the cars and the engines he builds. But I believe that his project Big Mike is the finest thing he's accomplished so far. Thanks to two V12 Detroit diesel engines matted together with splinted cranks, this beast is a V2471 Detroit diesel with 12 BDS blowers, 36 butterflies, and 24 cylinders. Big Mike has 3,424 horsepower on the dyno and at least 5,000 feet pounds of torque. That's more than eight times the amount of power that a conventional semi-truck produces. It's now mounted on an Allison transmission inside a 359 Peterbilt truck that's been specifically built with a massive 40-foot long bespoke chassis to keep it all together. Number 18. Kawasaki 48-cylinder. This amazing machine is undoubtedly beyond the wildest dreams of any bike lover. By building an incredible 48-cylinder Kawasaki bike, motorcycle legend Simon Whitlock stunned the motorcycle community. 48 cylinders, yes, 48. It's made up of six rows of eight blocks. It's modeled after the two-stroke Kawasaki triples that Simon is totally crazy for. A total of four Kawasaki S1 KH250 engines were used to build this invention, which has a displacement of 4,200 cubic centimeters. A BMW gearbox connects each engine to the next using gears. The motorbike really has 49 cylinders. The 48-cylinder block requires a bit more effort to start than your typical motorcycle engine. Therefore, Simon chose to employ a donkey engine, a little sub-50cc engine to start the 48-cylinder beast instead of an electric starter motor. 
Look at it as pure engineering achievement rather than a daily use bike. Oh, and the engine and box alone weigh just over a ton. In addition to running, it's also just about rideable. Number 17. The Blitzen Benz. The Blitzen Benz was a racing vehicle created in 1909 by Benz and Company in Mannheim, Germany. The global land speed record was broken in 1910 by an improved model. It was one of six cars based on the Grand Prix car, although it had a bigger 21,504 centimeter inline four engine with 200 horsepower and better aerodynamics. Only two of the original six Blitzen Benzes have been preserved. One is owned by Mercedes-Benz, and the other one is in a collection in the United States. Victor Hemery, a Frenchman who competed in land speed races, established a record on November 9, 1909 at Brooklands with an average speed of 202.7 kilometers per hour over a kilometer. Using the new rules of the Association International des Automobiles Club Reconos, British driver Leidston Hordston established a record for land speed racing at Brookstons on June 24, 1914. With two runs over a mile long circuit at an average speed of 200.7 kilometers per hour. Glenn Curtis's unofficial absolute speed record, land, sea, or air, achieved in 1907 on his V8 motorbike, was beaten by Bob Burnham on April 23, 1911, when he averaged 228.1 kilometers per hour over a mile at Daytona Beach. The record held by Burnham lasted until 1919. Before being disassembled in 1923, the Blitzen underwent a number of altercations after being rebuilt for circuit racing in 1914. Number 16. BMW Brutus with 46-liter engine. The 46-liter V12 in the BMW Brutus experimental car only scores 0.18 miles per gallon, which will not sit well with environmentalists, but it is unquestionably magnificent. The engine is just enormous. Because Germany was required by the Treaty of Versailles to disarm after World War I, a few aviation engines were laying around, and one of them ended up in the possession of BMW in 1925. BMW then mounted it to an American La France 1908 racing chassis for use in competition. Later that year, after considerable fiddling, it emerged from the workshop in all of its deadly chain-driven leaf-sprung splendor. The BMW technicians gave it the name Brutus because of its 12-cylinder, 46-liter engine and subtly menacing appearance. It'll burn through 6.5 liters of petrol in a sprint of 1.2 miles, and it'll emit about 28,000 grams per kilometer of CO2. That's about the same amount as 282 Volkswagen Polos. Brutus is also pretty showy. It can reach 62 miles per hour at a meager 800 RPM and generates 493 horsepower at just 1,500 RPM. That's a lot of power. Number 15. Fiat S76 engine. This large displacement inline four engine that powers the Fiat S76 land speed record vehicle was created and developed by Fiat in 1910. Following the 1910 to 1911 construction of the two car engine, Fiat produced an airship specific version of the same engine with three valves. The four Liani airships employed that engine, which was constructed between 1912 and 1913. Pitaway and a group of motorists were able to repair the S76 engine in November 2014 with the help of Leonardo E.M. Sordi, an Italian Air Force consultant and historical expert in mechanics and magneto, who rebuilt the ignition system, a full set of engine bearings made of shell and white metal, and the original crankcase for realigning bench supports that had become misaligned over the course of more than a hundred years of history. However, even more work was required before the Beast of Turin was shown and driven for the first time in over a century at the Goodwood Festival of Speed in 2015. Number 14. 24 Dolomar Chainsaw Motorbike What do you get when you combine 24 Dolomar chainsaws with a 12-tooth, 5-speed Harley-Davidson transmission? A 24-cylinder, 1.9-liter beast with 125 kilowatts of power is what you get. The Dolmete, sometimes known as Madness on Two Wheels, boasts one of the trickiest drive belt configurations in existence. 
Eight modules are created by grouping the individual motors in sets of three and connecting them with double-sided drive belts. The centrifugal clutch, a typical component of every chainsaw, is used to transmit torque rather than the separate engines being securely attached. The power from the eight modules is transmitted to a single output shaft using a series of three-dimensional toothed belts. The single output shaft then uses a twelfth belt to drive the clutch for the five-speed gearbox. Additionally, the toothed belt drive gears down the high revving chainsaw engine speed in the ratio 3.45 to 1, resulting in a controllable maximum of 45,000 RPMs at the transmission unit. The highest torque available at the gearbox input shaft to power the bike is a staggering 400 newton meters because the friction loss that is unavoidable with the belt drive is less than 10%. The combined power has an entirely unpredictable firing sequence, since the separate engines are coupled in a non-rigid manner via their centrifugal clutches. In this instance, a two-stroke engine's operation results in 24 ignition sites per engine revolution, or about one per every 15 degrees. In other words, compared to a 12-cylinder four-stroke engine, this power unit fires four times as frequently per revolution. Number 13, GE9X GV Aviation created the General Electric GE9X High Bypass Turbofan specifically for the Boeing 777X. The 777-9's inaugural flight was powered by it in early 2020. It has its ground debut in April 2016 and its first flight on March 13, 2018. On September 25, 2020, the Federal Aviation Administration granted it a type certificate. With a bigger fan, cutting-edge components including ceramic matrix composites, greater bypass and compression ratios, and other improvements over the other General Electric GE90, it should have a 10% fuel efficiency increase. On November 10, 2017, it broke the GE90 record by reaching a record thrust of 134,300 pounds in Peebles, setting a new Guinness World Record. Five engines had been tested up until that point. When operating under triple red line conditions, maximum fan speed, maximum core speed, and maximum exhaust gas temperature, the second engine will pass the FAA 150-hour block test. While three more engines are now being assembled, the third engine is located in Peebles, and the fifth will move to Winnipeg for testing in the beginning of 2017. By May 2018, icing, crosswind, intake, fan and booster aero mechanics, HP turbine aero mechanics, and thermal survey had completed one-fourth of the certification testing. Number 12. The Wartzilla RT Flex 96C A crazy engine developed by the Finnish company Wartzilla for low-speed diesel applications is this monster known as the Wartzilla RT Flex 96C. It's designed for big cargo ships that use heavy fuel oil. More than 2,300 metric tons and 80,080 kilowatts of power are produced in its biggest 14-cylinder model. Reciprocating engines are the world's biggest machines. In September of that year, the Emma Maersk became the first vessel to use the 14-cylinder variant in commercial operation. Unlike the RTA 96C engine, this one uses common rail technology. In place of traditional camshell, chain gear, fuel pump, and hydraulic actuator systems. As a result, the engine runs more efficiently and consumes less gasoline, all while producing less hazardous pollutants. Crosshead bearings of the engine allow the piston rods to always remain vertical, resulting in a tight seal under the pistons. There are therefore two distinct sources of engine oil, the cylinders themselves and the crankcase, with each source being tailored to its specific purpose. Continuous timed injection of a consumable lubricant protects the cylinders from wear and neutralizes the acids created during combustion of the frequently used high sulfur fuels, which is why the cylinders need to be kept lubricated. To prevent diametrical cylinder wear, to less than 0.03 millimeters per thousand hours, the crosshead design lowers sideways stress on the piston. Over 300 RT Flex 96C engines, as well as earlier RTA 96C engines, were in operation on or order as of 2006, according to the manufacturer. Number 11, GE90 115B. The largest jet engine in the world, the GE90-115B weighs little under 8,300 kilograms. This amazing engine, which is 5.5 millimeters long and 3.5 millimeters across, broke the thrust record by producing 127,900 pounds. That is a monster. 
According to the website for GE Aviation, the GE90 engine and the first ever carbon fiber composite fan blades for commercial aviation made their debut in 1995 aboard a British Airways 777 aircraft. Early GE90 engines produced between 74,000 and 94,000 pounds of thrust, and they continue to be the biggest turbofan engines in use today. GE has continued making improvements and investing in the engine to decrease weight, increase durability, and improve fuel economy. GE engineers improved the compressor, combustor, and high and low pressure turbine components of the GE90 115B engine. Number 10. Rotec Radial Bike the JRL Cycles Lucky 7 briefly had the title of being the only radial-powered production motorcycle in existence. The odd vehicle is propelled by a 7-cylinder radial aviation engine with a sweeping capacity of 2800 cc and a power output of 110 horsepower and 160 foot-pounds that was designed and manufactured in Australia. Over the years, a select few custom motorcycle builders have developed their own aircraft-powered motorcycles, and many others have created radial-powered motorcycles, including the renowned Lucky Kayser, who chopped two cylinders off the end of a Merlin V12 to create a V-twin motorcycle with a 5,000cc engine. The fact that aircraft engine bikes are commonly connected with the word lucky is probably not a coincidence. These engines are frequently bigger, heavier, and more oddly shaped than ordinary motorcycle engines, with astounding power output statistics. The JRL Cycles Lucky 7 was initially intended to be produced in a quantity of 50 or more units. However, the development and manufacturing costs resulted in an MSRP of more than 100,000 USD severely restricting the market. Despite the expenditures, we're aware of four JRL Cycles Lucky 7 cycles that were produced, one prototype and three production models. Number nine, Rolls-Royce Viper Jet Engine. Engines are awesome, strong, and there's just something about them that makes you wanna see them in action. Some visitors, though, like to get a different look at these massive engines in operation. Here, some would-be engineers have improvised a Rolls-Royce Viper engine configuration. The Viper was designed for drone aircraft, hence it's smaller than conventional jet engines. The Australian Jindivig target zone, which is still in use today as a remote-controlled target, was powered by the Viper turbojet, which Armstrong Siddeley created in the early 1950s as a cheap disposable engine with just 10 hours in a projected lifetime. It entered service in this capacity in 1953. A Viper 11 derivative designed as a commercial, military training, and light combat aircraft, the Viper 500. The final model with a civilian use was the MK601 series. This engine was mounted in a Beechcraft Hawker BH125 series, 600A business aircraft, serial number 256023N514V in September 1973. It was taken out of service in April of 86, and in October it was presented to the National Air and Space Museum. One of the longest turbojet engine production runs belonged to this power plant. The Viper 5 did away with unnecessary features in 1952, offering the Royal Air Force the first comprehensive jet training system ever, with the Jet Provost. Most second-generation trainer aircraft, including the Jet Provost Mark IV, Italian Machi MB326, Slavic Soko Galeb, and Indian Hall HJT-16 Kirin were powered by upgraded Viper 11s. Number 8. Peterbilt 379 – Shockwave Why not equip something a little larger with a jet engine? Like a massive truck painted in an outrageous fire to let everyone know how badass it is. This machine is literally on fire. It's sometimes referred to as the Shockwave jet truck. These jet-powered American vehicles include Super Shockwave, a 1957 Chevrolet truck, and Shockwave, a Peterbilt semi. Shockwave is the name of the first Shockwave truck. It now holds the full-size truck jet-powered world speed record at 376 miles per hour. Three Westinghouse J34 48 jet engines power the truck, giving it 36,000 horsepower and enabling it to complete the quarter mile in 6.63 seconds. Wouldn't that speed up the trip to Whole Foods? Chris Darnell is the current driver of Shockwave and he routinely triumphs in rolling drag races at air shows where he competes against 300 mile per hour aircraft. 
Yeah, this semi truck has the power to take on a plane. Each mile requires 400 liters of gasoline, and when the afterburners are used, this amount increases significantly. This truck needs two airplane parachutes to slow it down after a race. Therefore, don't expect a Tesla version anytime soon. The Super Shockwave is the newest version of the truck. This vehicle is powered by two Westinghouse J3448 jet engines. The truck's design was inspired by a 1957 Chevy cab. The car's highest speed over a mile was measured at 336 miles per hour. What a strange vehicle. Number 7. Patello V12 32 engine. A 12 cylinder piston engine known as the V12 has two banks of six cylinders arranged in a V shape around a single crankshaft. Compared to V10 engines, V12 engines are more common. They're not as common as V8 engines though. In 1904, the first V12 engine was created for use in racing yachts. Early luxury cars, boats, airplanes, and tanks all used V12 engines because of its balanced design and power delivery that was smooth. In the years following World War II, jet engines largely replaced aircraft V12 engines, which had attained their peak during that conflict. V12 engines were widely used in Formula One racing between the late 1960s and the early 1990s. V12 engines have been used in several European sports and luxury automobiles, as well as marine engines, railroad locomotives, big stationary power, and other vehicles in the 21st century. The 1964 Honda RA271 racing car introduced the first V12 engine used in Formula One, which was utilized until the 1968 Honda RA301 racing car. With new V12 engines from Ferrari, Maserati, and Westlake, V12 engines started to gain popularity in 1960. The Ferrari engine made its racing debut in the Ferrari 312 and was utilized until the Ferrari 312B in 1975, when Ferrari transitioned to a flat 12 engine. The Maserati engine was first utilized in the Cooper T81 and continued to be used until the Cooper T86 in 1969. Number 6. The Pratt & Whitley R4360 Wasp Major a four-row radial piston aircraft engine called the Pratt & Whitney R4360 Wasp Major was first created and produced during World War II. One of the largest displacement aviation radial piston engines mass-produced in the U.S., the Wasp Major is a major milestone in big engine history. The war ended before the final member of the family and the pinnacle of Pratt & Whitney's piston engine technology could be utilized in combat aircraft. Eight of these monstrosities, each generating 3,000 base horsepower, were mounted on the renowned Spruce Goose H4 Hercules. You'd imagine that the engine could live up to expectations with a moniker like that, and it most definitely can. The 71-liter version's 28 radial arranged cylinders produced 3,500 horsepower. Critics dubbed the aircraft Spruce Goose despite the fact that it was nearly entirely constructed of birch. Due to wartime constraints on the use of aluminum and the worries about weight, the aircraft was built from wood. Before the scaled composite Strato launch made its maiden flight on April 13, 2019, the Hercules was the largest flying boat ever constructed and possessed the widest wingspan of any aircraft to be ever flown. The plane is still in terrific shape. From 1980 until 92, it was on public exhibit in Long Beach, California. It's currently on display at the Evergreen Aviation and Space Museum in McMinnville, Oregon, in the United States. Number 5. Caterpillar 797 Series of Hauler Trucks Engines the Caterpillar 797 is a line of off-highway, ultra-class, two-axle haul trucks with a mechanical powertrain that Caterpillar incorporated designed and produced in the U.S. primarily for high-production mining and heavy construction applications across the world. The 797 series, which has been produced since 98, is Caterpillar's biggest and most powerful haul truck line. The current third generation model, the 797F, is the maximum payload capacity among mechanical drive haul trucks and one of the largest haul truck payload capabilities in the world, up to 400 short tons. One of the largest engines in the world is found in Caterpillar 797 series of hauler trucks. The biggest of the series, the 797F, is really a spectacular piece of engineering that powers enormous freight trucks. It's propelled by a 406-liter V20 turbo diesel engine with 4,000 horsepower or more of output. 
It's so large that 675 liters of oil are often used for a single oil change. Seven Caterpillar or supplier factories across North America produce and assemble the majority of the 797's parts before shipping them off to the customer's location for final assembly by Caterpillar workers. Caterpillar makes the engine in Lafayette, Indiana, and then transports it to Caterpillar's assembly facility in Decatur, Illinois. Six to seven semi-trailer truckloads are needed for the engine, frame, axles, and differential. One load is needed for the cab, two loads are needed for the six tires, and four loads are needed for the dump body. One 797 takes a total of 12 to 13 semi-trailer truckloads to transport it from a different production location to the customer's location. Number four, the Siemens SWT 6.0154. It's difficult to imagine a more enormous offshore wind turbine than the Siemens SWT 6.0154. There are 18,600 meters of sweep area and a power output of 6 megawatts. Siemens direct drive technology is used in the turbine, which has fewer moving parts than the other direct drive turbines. More than 360 tons is not a problem for the skull. According to Siemens, a combination of ruggedness and low weight greatly decreases installation and maintenance costs and enhances longevity. Due to Siemens' extensive offshore expertise, the SWT 6.0154 direct drive wind turbine is intended to take advantage of a wide range of circumstances. It can be used in any known offshore site that meets IEC 1 requirements. The Siemens offshore direct drive turbine's 154 meter rotor has a sweeping rotor area of 18,600 square meters, which maximizes energy generation at offshore locations from the most exposed offshore sites to interior seas with moderate wind resources. Number 3. Union Pacific Railroads 4000 The American Locomotive Company produced the 4884 steam locomotive known as the Union Pacific Big Boy between 1941 and 1944, and the Union Pacific Railroad used it in revenue service up until 1962. The 25 Big Boy locomotives were created to transport cargo between Ogden, Utah and Green River, Wyoming over the Watash Range. They were transferred to Cheyenne, Wyoming in the late 1940s, where they transported cargo up Sherman Hill to Laramie, Wyoming. They were the only locomotives with a 4884 wheel configuration, consisting of two sets of eight driving wheels, a four-wheel trailing truck to carry the enormous firebox, and a four-wheel leading truck for stability approaching bends. Eight Big Boys are still around today, with most on static exhibit at museums around the nation. For the 150th anniversary of the first transcontinental railroad, one of them was repurchased by the Union Pacific and refurbished between 2014 and 2019. As a result, it reclaimed the title of biggest and most potent functioning steam locomotive worldwide. The crews held the locomotives in high regard because they thought they were agile and more user-friendly than other forms of motive power. However, after the war, rises in the cost of coal and manpower, as well as the development of efficient, affordable diesel-electric power, signaled the end of their useful life. Number 2. B&W CM884WS150 between 1932 and 1962, the BMW CM884 WS150, which was installed in the HC Orstrid power station in Denmark, was the biggest diesel engine ever built. It was an eight-cylinder, two-stroke diesel engine, which was quite huge. At around 25 meters long, 12.5 meters high, and weighing around 1,400 tons, the engine's immensity is astounding. The engine as a whole contains 40 tons of lubricating oil and has a crankshaft that alone weighs 140 tons. Although there's no information on the engine's displacement, it's claimed that it can generate 22,500 horsepower. The Gothers Gate Power Station, built in 1892, as well as the West and Eastern Power Stations, built in 1898 and 1901, were the first three power plants in Copenhagen. When it finished, it was one of the biggest power plants in Denmark, a title it held until 1940. It provided lighting for the whole Copenhagen region, reducing the current power plants to backup systems and transformer stations. Number 1. The Massive F1 Rocket Engine the F1 rocket engine was created by Rocketdyne and is often referred to as the Rocketdyne F1. 
the Saturn V rocket used this engine throughout the 1960s and early 1970s. It makes use of a gas generator cycle that was created in the United States in the late 50s. The SIC first stage of each Saturn V, the primary launch vehicle for the Apollo program, used five F-1 engines. The F-1 is still the most powerful liquid-fueled single combustion chamber rocket engine ever created. In order to satisfy a 1995 U.S. Air Force demand for an extremely big rocket engine, Rocketdyne created the F-1 and the E-1. Although the E-1 was successfully tested in static fire, it was soon viewed as a technological dead end and replaced with the bigger, more potent F-1. The F-1 engine is the most potent, liquid-fueled, single-nozzle rocket engine ever to take flight. Although the M-1 rocket engine was intended to have a higher thrust, only component-level testing was done on it. Additionally, the RD-170 has four nozzles and creates higher thrust. The F-1's fuel was RP-1, aka rocket-grade kerosene, and its oxidizer was liquid oxygen. Fuel and oxygen were injected into the combustion chamber using a turbo pump. Between Apollo 8 and Apollo 17, F-1 thrust and efficiency were enhanced, which was critical to fulfill the subsequent Apollo missions' growing payload capacity requirements. There were slight performance differences across engines, and average thrust varied from mission to mission. Which of these awesome engines impressed you the most? Can we build amazing engines which are healthy for the planet? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!